Thank you. Um, good morning. All right. Well, um, did you ever embrace a lion like this before? Just like this girl? No? I've never done it, but it must be awesome, actually. Um, this raised me a, a, a question, which is, um, what do you think, guys, is the main key element to be in harmony with all of those that surround us? Or, in other words, in terms of being in a company, what's the, the, the key element to, as a company, establish healthy and productive relations with the others? Well, for sure, it's to be in harmony with the others. First, we need to be in harmony with ourselves. And this is my point today. That's what I'm going to talk about in, in harmonizing our company in order to have a more robust uh, data management system to be able to um, interact with the others. Then, having a robust data management system, we will be able to, um, well, relate with our data flows from the local to the global scales. It's important these days to know that everything is changing. Methodologies change, technologies change, and, and we need to adapt to that. We need to accept this is happening. Even more in our case, we are a relatively small company, so we need to optimize our resources to, to be able to flow with, with this business. So this is a, a very high-level example of what is happening with one of our facilities, the Glider facility. It's, it, don't take it as a serious um, schema, so more things are happening. But what I want to illustrate here is that we have uh, data provided from many platforms that we integrate in our system and then distribute such data to other data integrators. At the same time, others may take uh, our data and reprocess it again to submit this data to another uh, infrastructure with another um, format. But what would happen if, if we want to integrate new platforms, new technologies, sensors, variables, or even if we want to process data from external users, or if we want to assemble a new data flow for another infrastructure, or suddenly a data format gets obsolete and we need to um, renew it for a, for a new one, or even if we want to integrate best practices and, and standards in our system. All these requirements that come from different sources need to be somehow um, um, well, well funneled in, in, in our organization to be able to give response. So these are the main three drivers from our organization that are feeding our value chain. And by the way, we, we use an open data um, policy, which is, has nothing to do with the fair data principles. But by the way, these are the, the ones that feed our value chain. This is an approach of our value chain, as I said, from the data acquisition to the benefits that we provide to the society. And if we want to maintain or sustain this system in the future, we need to somehow close the loop and be able to integrate such requirements that I was talking um, before. So how to do that? Well, if we need to be able to, to change, to adapt to, to whatever is happening, we need to keep in mind that not only changing is one of the factors, we need to be able or open to improve our system continuously. So if we wanted to change, by instance, as human beings, we would follow for sure healthy habits. We would, we would have a, a purpose for, for changing, like becoming a better person or, or, or developing our maximum human potential. Uh, we need an action plan to, to do that. And for sure, we need a huge amount of willingness to, to be able to improve every day. So, as a company, uh, how do we integrate this in our data management strategy? Well, for sure, using best practices and standards as much as we can, developing a product and services strategy that is focused in, in target sectors and, and certain types of users, and, of course, establishing a data management program that is supported by a quality management system that gives us the way to or, or, or put the playground to give us the chance to generate a framework for continuous improvement. Uh, fair principles. Let's talk about them a little bit because this session today uh, goes about this. 
In SOFIB, we clearly uh, agree uh, about the benefits uh, of making our data fair. And this goes from maximizing the potential of our data assets till the maximization of the impact of, from our research. These are the fair guiding principles uh, with all the, let's say, checklists or, or indicators on how fair our data are. I'm not going to go um, through it. Um, but well, the, the first question that arises is that, well, we've been a long time doing a lot of work in our organization and now we've got these fair principles, well, now or a few years ago, but now we want to, well, work with a fair principle. So the first question is, do we already have something in place to, to start working with? Because we've been working a lot, so we, we might have um, bits and pieces of, of, of some of these elements present in our system. The, well, the, respond, the response is yes, and in this case we felt very identified with some outcomes that came up from, from the last um, AGU fall meeting in 2017. So, and these two statements uh, caught our attention. So the first one is that the necessary elements needed to effectively share data between repositories and publishers already exist at small scales. That's good or support uh, what we were thinking. And the other, after a stakeholder um, consultation, there was uh, this other outcome that was that the greater difficulty was thought to be around interoperability with reusability as a close second. And that's quite uh, mirroring uh, at least our situation in, in our organization. So now we know a little bit more about fair data. The, we know that we have potential to include that in our system and we have now um, some limitations or we know about some limitations about implementing them. So how do we put this into our system? Well, we use a data management program. Uh, I'm not going to stop too much here because it, it would take ages, but this is a data man, uh, management maturity model. Um, the first time we heard about that was from a conference, uh, from a presentation from Leslie Weyborn from the Australian National uh, Computing Infrastructure uh, during the Audit 2 framework in, in Tasmania uh, last year or almost two years ago. The very interesting thing here is that they are using, or they suggested that using the data quality module or area uh, through a data, the development of a data quality strategy, they were um, suggesting to embed all these uh, fair principles into the data um, quality strategy. So, and that caught our attention a lot because that kind of makes a roadmap that we can follow to uh, achieve all the tick um, elements of the fair principles. So we started to work in our own roadmap for our organization based in these uh, concepts and we are still working on it. And we are still working on it because there are other things underlying that we needed to better understand, which are the processes that are um, occurring in our organization in the whole data life cycle of our organization. We are a facility of facilities, so we covered this need of developing, uh, well, after having a very good training, must say, from IOD in research data management, we were developing data management plans for each one of our facilities because each one of those has their particular um, specifications or, or their particular issues. But the good thing about that is that all our data management plans are standardized so we can jump from one to the other uh, having the same structure and, and that's very powerful. And it's very interesting because this gave us um, the capability to understand how or is giving us, uh, let's just say, the capability to understand how our data flows or our data life cycles are working. And then we can identify those areas that need to be improved or, or, or need to be added or deleted. And this gives us that <coughs> playground that we need to uh, develop a <coughs> continuous improvement framework. But this continuous improvement framework uh, doesn't come from our data quality strategy or uh, from our data management plan. So that's the, uh, why we needed to implement a quality management system for that. Quality management system just very uh, summarized because 
there's courses and training for, for that. It's just a set of tools and methodologies that allows us to control and coordinate the quality of our products and services. Understanding um, quality as a measure of how close a product or service aligns with um, a set of identified requirements. And requirements is one of the things that we are continuously dealing with, new requirements that get into our system. So we took another training course with IOD and uh, that I strongly recommend you guys to, to undertake. I guess that next year there's another one. Mm, I'm not going through it, but basically what it allows us is practically introduce the cycle of continuous improvement in our processes. I like to see it more like uh, establishing the four seasons in our, in our system. So this allows us that any pr process that we want to improve, we can start planning it and then after planning it, we can apply it. Of course, we wait until this process uh, ends working and we mm, harvest the results and then we can assess whether there are things that are not working or, or that they are. So we can just check and get rid of those parts that are useless and, and start again with the improvement. Mm, we have still not that in place, but we are fully convinced that when this is in place, we'll be uh, very, very powerful in, in terms of optimizing the, our day-by-day -day, uh, work in, in Sofib. So just to put things in context as a, as a last um, uh, slide, what we are doing is basically trying to set all the fair principles into our data management program that is supported by a quality management system that allow us uh, or, or give us the chance to become flexible enough to incorporate new requirements in our system that as much as we can, we would like to funnel this through the usage of standards and community agreed, uh, agreed sorry, best practices in order to, well, maximize the quality of our data assets and as a consequence, maximizing the <clears throat> quality of our, of our products and services. And um, do I have an extra minute or 30 yeah, seconds? Time. All right. But yeah, it's very quick. I just wanted to do a quick like half minute survey or self-reflection about uh, in your opinion. So that's all personal. So no, you don't have to respond to that, of course. But in, in more opinion, in, in your organization, where in this step do you think that your organization is, is now, your, your data management practices are now? I give you 10 seconds to just reflect about that. <laughs> and just, I'll share with you a secret. Um, we started to think about these things and worry about these things because we realized that we were far from being in the step five. <laughs> so. Thank you very much and questions.